Hey internet, and welcome to Vlogmas Day 22. Dum dum da 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 dum 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 dum. <laughs> Wait a second, I'm not Abby. Oh, hi, I'm Nyla. It's sometimes hard to remember because me and Abby are so similar in the fact that we both are the only daughters in a family with lots of boys and it's now a really big family with lots of nieces and nephews. So I'm the youngest in a family of five and it is four boys and then me. Um, and at this moment in time, three of those boys are married and they all have children. Um, there's no, I don't think there's a collective word for nieces and nephews, but I have eight of those. I've got um, the four nieces and four nephews. So four boys and four girls. All of them getting married and having four boys and four girls like balances out the boy girl divide in our family. But before that it was very much male dominated, boy dominated for a long time. Um, which I don't think I minded because I don't think I was really conscious of it for a long time, you know. I don't think when you grow up in a family you're not, you don't often get the chance to take a step back and be like wait. This, there's a lot of boys in this family, there's not many girls. There were times growing up when I was like, oh, I really want a sister, I really wish I had a sister. Particularly around the age when you start having sleepovers with your friends, I, like, I think that was definitely the point where I was like, oh, I wish I had a sister now. Um, but apart from that, I think I enjoyed growing up in a house with all boys. And it's also hard to like say if you enjoyed it or not. There's nothing to compare it to. There is no, there's no alternative, there's no other. And actually the fact that, that I was the youngest meant that when I got to the age where like I really did want uh, like a female opinion around the house or a girl around the house, my brothers were married and so their wives were like having an older sister, you know, having sister-in-laws sort of made up for that. Um, and so I currently have four sister-in-laws, which is great. One of the things that has been interesting to see develop in the last few years is the fact that when I was born, my oldest brother was 19 years old and he made the journey back from university to see me. That meant that when he got married a few years later and had his first child when he was 26, I was only like six years old at that time. And so there's only been a six year difference between me and my oldest nephew for our entire lives. And that never really was weird. Again, when you're younger, you don't think this is weird because you don't know any alternatives. You don't know any different. You don't know that being an aunt is a weird thing to attribute to someone who's a six year old. You know, you don't know that. And I always found it hilarious when my nephews found it weird. I remember my second oldest nephew found it weird when he was like 10 years old or something. And I was like, why is this weird? Like, it's just, I always found it funny. Um, but it's only when when I turned 19, three years ago, and my oldest nephew turned 13, and I was like, whoa, hold on a second, hold on a second. We're both teenagers. We're both in this weird, middle, moody teenager phase of our lives at the same time, but I'm your aunt, and I'm supposed to be like, the older whatever. As much as I always wanted to be the cool aunt, and like, the young, hip aunt, um, aunts are supposed to have some level of responsibility and whatever and uh yeah when we were both teenagers at the f at the same time was the first time that I found it so weird I took a step back and I was like this is so strange oh my goodness now he's like 15 almost and that is so weird to me again I'm just like I can't comprehend that I think when they're young it doesn't seem that weird because you expect your nieces and nephews to be little babies. But once they start growing up, then it just it, it just gets weird. And then when you're growing up, you are more conscious of it and you can take a step back and think about it. And that's when it gets weird. But before that, it wasn't really weird. In terms of how it's shaped me, I'm not really sure. I feel like when I was doing my A-levels, so when I was 17 and 18, I was the only girl in my maths class and in my economics class. And I remember at that time I was like, this may be a weird situation for another girl to be in who's used to being surrounded by girls, but I'm used to being surrounded by boys, so this is fine for me. Like, I know how to deal in a very laddish situation, in a very testosterone heavy situation, I feel. So yeah, again, that's the only time I've really stepped back and thought about it. I think from the outside, people would say that my love for football is really heavily influenced from my brothers and the fact that I grew up in a 
very male household, but honestly, I watch more football than almost all my brothers and you know, my dad was never really into football. He's always been more of a cricket kind of person. So I'm the only one who's gonna be watching football highlights on a Saturday evening out of all my brothers, like religiously every single weekend. One of my brothers will watch them and he's just started going to football matches, but I went to a live football match before he ever went to one as well. So I, I would not personally attribute my love for football, English football that is, um, to my brothers. I suppose I've never really thought about what I've missed out on from not having sisters um, because again it's just hard to know like I went to a mixed secondary school as well I didn't go to an all-girls school so if anything it's just been it's almost weird to be in girl only situations I know that when I started university and my linguistics course was really heavily female dominated and then I joined the women's football team which is obviously all women and then I joined the Islamic society which is segregated so that was all women and I joined a, a tv station at my mosque which again is segregated so that's all women and then I was like wow this is so different to everything I know like there are I don't have any close male friends at the moment and it felt so strange um I think that's probably why I like having in my Twitter bio I've got football and feminism, my two favourite subjects, but they may on the surface seem at odds with each other and I don't really want to say that. Um, but football is seen as a very male dominated area and feminism is obviously seen as a female dominated and for females area, you know. And so those two concepts may seem at odds with each other. And that's kind of why I like the idea of putting them together and being like, no, you can coexist, you can you can intertwine, you know. Um, I'm really interested in women's football as well and following that and promoting that. So, yeah. If anything, it's probably made me want to break down gender stereotypes more than anything. It's probably made me want to be like, I can do the things my brothers can do and I can do the things that my all female work colleagues and university friends and stuff can do and you can play both fields and do both things at the same time um and yeah that is probably the biggest takeaway I have had from growing up in a male dominated family being like well I am a cis female and I can do everything my brothers can do and watch me you know <laughs> I do think actually that growing up with four brothers has made me more of a feminist than anything else. So if you're thinking, wow, that's great Nyla, but I really am missing Abby. Well, I have good news for you. She posted a video on the exact same subject and there is a link to it right here. So click that and you can see her video. And otherwise she will be back tomorrow for the last few days of Vlogmas. So congratulate her on getting this far and thanks for watching, bye. Oh, I need to find a candle. Okay, 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 okay.